Now that more of you out there are watching my channel, not just to see beautiful videos of Florida, but also for some real estate advice here, I figured this would be a great opportunity for me to make a video about how much of a credit score you need to actually buy a house, because this is actually one of the most common questions I've gotten over the years as a real estate agent and there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about this and it's actually an easier question to answer than you might think. So I'm going to dive into some of the details here and this is all going to be based on an article that I literally just got in my inbox today and I've been wanting to make this video for months now so I figured this is the perfect opportunity for me to make this video and I'm going to base it all on this article so here we go. So this credit score question might also be something that a lot of you are wondering especially right now because interest rates are literally at a record low since the Fed started keeping track of the interest rates. There's really been no better time in our history to actually buy a house and obviously the reason why they're doing this is because of the whole illness that's going on and people need to get back out there and get back to regular life and one of the best ways to do that is if you have a solid income and job still you can afford to buy a house and this is the best time to actually do that if you can find a good deal where you live. Now I know that advice might sound a little contradictory since I just recently made a video about not buying real estate here in Miami which you can check out here but that video is basically based on this particular market and I'm always thinking with an investment point of view and with an investor's mindset because that's the type of real estate that I buy. But if you're one of those people that knows that they've been wanting to buy a house for a long time and you plan on living in that house for a long period of time and you know your income situation is stable, then this is more who I'm talking to here in this video and this information applies to you more than anyone else. Because it is a good time to buy if the area you're looking to buy in is favorable and is a buyer's market according to your research and because the interest rates are at record lows which means you're going to pay less for the house over time. So the first thing is I'm going to base all of these credit scores on the four typical loans that people normally get which is a conventional loan an FHA loan, a VA loan, or a jumbo loan. Those are the four main type of mortgages that people end up getting on a place and these are going to be the respective credit scores that most lenders will require in the event you're getting one of those loans. Now the first myth that I want to bust before I get into the scores that you need is that every lender is going to be different and a lot of different things are going to affect the type of interest rate they're going to give you you know, you're going to base all kinds of things on how strong of a buyer you are, you know, how many assets do you own now, how much money do you have in the bank, how much of a percentage can you put down on the property, how strong is your job and work history, and those are all other factors that they're going to take into consideration besides the credit score. So you've got to understand that the numbers that you're going to hear after this are all just generalizations, okay? your situation is going to be different depending on your particular details in life. So the first one and the most common one is the conventional loan and the minimum credit score required to obtain this type of loan is a 620 or higher and a conventional loan is the one that most people end up getting because it usually comes with the best deal and also if you're going to buy a condo which is especially common here in South Florida almost all the time you're going to need to get a conventional loan. Almost none of the buildings here qualify for the other types of loans. So this would be the one that probably 80% of people end up getting. The next type of loan is the jumbo loan. And for this one, most lenders are going to require a credit score of 680. And this is definitely on the high side and a lot of people don't even have a credit score this high. And the reason why you need to have such a high credit score for this type of loan is because it's what they call a non-conforming loan. And that means that the bank that gives you the loan can't actually sell this loan to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. And that's the reason why a conventional loan is usually a better deal and cheaper for you because the bank will usually get that loan to you and then what they'll do after that loan closes, they'll sell it to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, which means then you will have a federally backed loan. 
I'm not going to get into all of the details on how that works in this video, but just know that's the difference between a conventional and a jumbo loan. And the reason why the jumbo loan, you have to have a higher credit score is because the lender is most likely either going to hold that loan, which is not something they normally do, or they're going to have to sell it to another private lender or mortgage holder. So therefore, they consider that a higher risk and are going to require that your credit score is much higher in order for you to obtain that type of loan. The next one we're gonna talk about is an FHA loan. And there's actually two different credit score requirements here, depending on how much of a percentage you're going to put down. If you're going to be putting 10% down, you only need to have a 500 or above credit score. If you're going to put down to standard 3.5%, which is a lot more common with FHA, you need to have a minimum of a 580 credit score. Now, usually the main reason you want to get an FHA loan is if you really don't have a lot of money to put as a down payment, but you'd rather buy than rent, and I'm assuming you've already determined that buying in your area is going to be cheaper than renting because that's the smart financial thing to do. So an FHA loan would be really good for you to get if you're gonna be buying a single family house that you plan on living in for a long time and that house is gonna be cheaper for you to own it than rent it. That's who gets an FHA loan. The last one I wanna talk about is the VA loan. Technically, there is no credit score requirement for this type of loan, but most lenders are going to require that you have a 620 or higher, but that is not set in stone. And another thing to note about the VA loan is that the only people who are eligible to get a VA loan is if you are a veteran of this country, meaning you served in the military at some point somewhere in the United States military, and that will qualify you to get a VA loan. But if you've never been in the military before, then you won't be eligible for this type of loan. However, if you have been in the military before, I would strongly suggest trying to get this type of loan especially if you are short on cash, because you can literally get a VA loan for 0% down. So regardless of any of the credit score requirements, 0% down doesn't exist basically anywhere else, okay? So definitely try to get this. It might not be the smartest thing to do financially to put 0% down on a house because you literally have no equity right from the start. However, if you run the numbers and you know you can afford it, this could be a good deal for you and you can get into a house for virtually nothing. Now, a couple other things I wanna mention here in this video, besides those credit score requirements, I wanna give you the example this article lays out as a reference to how much of a difference having a better credit score can make versus if you don't have a good credit score. So if you were going to go and apply for a mortgage on July 9th, 2020, it says, that a Florida buyer with the lowest credit score range of 620 to 639 could expect to pay $1,021 each month to the bank at a 4.564% rate. But a buyer in the top range who has a credit score of 760 to 850 would pay only $835 per month at a 2.922% interest rate. And that's about a $200 per month savings. So that's pretty significant, especially over the long run of your loan. So not only does $200 a month allow you to save extra money in the bank and use it towards a vacation fund or investing or whatever, but it also is going to save you literally thousands of dollars over the life of that loan. So this is where having good credit really pays off. And as you've heard from these requirements, having good credit is not a necessity but it's going to really work in your favor if you do have good credit, and it's also going to open the door to just having as many loan options available to you, not only that, but also at the best interest rates. So now that you know more or less what your credit score needs to be to buy a house, now the next thing I want you to do is to put a comment below and let me know what type of real estate video you'd like me to make next because I plan on doing more videos like this one because obviously this is my specialty. This is what I've been doing for a living for a long time, but I like combining it and mixing it with the Florida lifestyle and living because I really love shooting all those beautiful shots outside and things like that. But let me know what kind of real estate video you'd like to hear from me next so that way I can consider making that for you. And if you don't wanna wait for that video to come out, you can go ahead and check out some more of my videos right over here, and I'll see you guys over there.